Ladies and gentlemen on the left side of the room, um, I will give the floor to Director General Francis Gurry, who will be speaking to you about two subjects today. The first one are the international patent statistics for 2011. Then uh, we'll take questions on that, and then we'll move to the cyber squatting arbitration mediation center activities in 2011, because that is embargoed until Wednesday. So it's just to make the taping easier downstairs. So. Um, Karsten Fink is also with us, our Chief Economist, and um, Eric Wilbers, the Director of the Arbitration Mediation Center. Sir, you have the floor. Uh, okay. uh, thank you very much, uh, Sam. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to you. Thank you very much for coming this morning. So, uh, let's start with the PCT. As you know, the uh, international patent system, uh, insofar as it exists, and therefore an extremely important indicator of what is happening internationally in the field of innovation in particular. It's one of the most important output indicators uh, in the field of innovation. Let me say that 2011 was an exceptional year in many ways, uh, and I will deal first in terms of volume, or if you like demand, how much activity is going on in the field of innovation insofar as the patent system provides an insight into that, and then who's doing what, <clears throat> um, you know, which uh, players are active. So first, in terms of demand, uh, despite the uh, uncertain economic conditions, we had a record year with 181,900, nearly 182,000 international applications being filed under the PCT. That was a growth rate of 10.7 per cent over 2010, and the highest growth rate that we have had since the year 2005. It was, <coughs> excuse me, it was also the year in which the two millionth PCT uh, international application was filed, and in terms of the use of the system and the accelerating pace of uh, innovation, uh, it's useful to remember that it took 26 years for us to reach the first one millionth application, and then a further seven years only to go to the two millionth application. Uh, okay, so um, that's the first thing I think to note that it was an extremely strong year uh, despite the relative uncertainty, as I said, of the economy. Uh, who's doing what? Well, it's, I think, a similar story to the one that we have been telling for several years now. There is an ongoing uh, geographical shift occurring in the use of the PC, uh, PCT system from, generally speaking, uh, North America and Europe to Asia, or if you like, uh, we see the emergence of Asia and as a consequence the relative uh, decline in the share of uh, North America and Europe in relative terms. <coughs> Asia now accounts for 38.8 per cent, nearly 39 per cent of all international uh, applications filed under the PCT. Europe is 30.9 per cent, and uh, the North America is 28.3 per cent. So that is a significant change. Uh, we saw <coughs> extraordinary performances last year, 2011, by China, first of all, whose the number of applications increased by 33.4 per cent and by Japan, where the number of applications, international applications, increased by 21%. The explanations for the rise in the two cases are, we believe, different. In the former case, it's a reflection of the increased innovative activity that is taking place. The second place, in the second case, Japan, while <clears throat> the amount of innovative uh, activity perhaps increases all the time at a relatively modest uh, rate, uh, the very large increase in the number of international applications filed represents um, 
a shift in the use of or a change in patenting behaviour on the part of Japanese enterprises, which tend now to file a lesser number of domestic applications and a higher uh, fraction of the domestic applications they tend to internationalise. Uh, two other comments then in relation to who's doing what, uh, and then I'll stop talking on this point. Um, it's very interesting to see the middle income uh, countries increasing their use of the PCT system and their filing of international uh, patent applications, presumably reflecting their journey to higher value uh, or to a higher level on the value chain and to increased innovation. So we saw Brazil increase by 17%, 17 percent, 17.2 percent in 2011 and we saw India increase by 11.2 percent. In the case of India that 11.2 percent rise followed on a 36 percent rise in the preceding year. So we now have two years in a row in which there is significant or double digit growth uh, from India and we uh, will watch with interest to see if that trend is confirmed in the future. Also uh, from the Russian Federation there was an increase of some 20.8 percent and from Turkey of 12.7 percent. So this we feel is very interesting to see uh, at last, if you like, the reflection in terms of output in innovation area in international patent applications of the uh, changing position of the middle income countries. My last uh, comment is perhaps on who's doing what in terms of, of individual corporations where we see that the biggest filer, the, the filer of the highest number of applications was a Chinese corporation, ZTE, active in the telecommunications area, and it overtook Panasonic Corporation of Japan as the top filer. Um, in this regard, uh, um, we see that Japan has 21 separate applicants in the top 50 applicants rank. So a, a very significant performance by Japanese corporations. Okay, I shall uh, stop my remarks at that point and we would be very happy to take any questions. Yes, uh, Daniel Prusen with BNA. Um, Francis, I'm wondering if you can tell me, uh, uh, ZTE, is that the first time a Chinese company has topped the list of uh, corporations uh, filing patents? And I'm also wondering as well, uh, in terms of uh, we have a lot more patent applications being filed from China and other emerging economies, but do you have any idea how successful these applications are, the quality of these applications? Are they on a par? with the filings in, uh, say, Europe or North America? Thank you. Uh, Dan, on the first one, if, it was, uh, if I understand correctly, you're just asking for a confirmation. Yes, uh, ZTE was the Chinese corporation that was the top the filer. First time the Chinese? No, no, first uh, time? no, they were two years ago. 2000 years ago in 2010. 2010 was Panasonic. Yeah, but, but China was also before 2010. It's not the first time that China has... In no. 2009. It was. 2009 it was also, but I think it was Huawei yes. from memory, not ZTE. And 2010 was Panasonic. Uh, what was he saying? Oh, yes, the success of these. We don't, short answer, have a measure of that. Uh, you would need to track you know, the use of the inventions in the corporation's business and within their accounts, you know, uh, what amounts were attributable to it. So it's a very difficult thing to, to track uh, the quality of an invention unless it's a really absolutely, you know, outstanding, uh, basic, fundamental invention. 
Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry, I just follow up. I was thinking more in terms of rejection of the applications. Uh, do we have any idea whether um, how applications from China and other emerging economies fare in terms of the number that are rejected? No. We don't have any indication, and I think it may also be worth pointing out that it is too early to tell because many of the applications, most of the applications, in fact, that have been filed by the Chinese companies, let's say, over the last two or three years, are still, you know, in, um, in, in undergoing examination in national patent offices. Uh, so I think in a few years it would be interesting to look back and see, you know, how the a uh, strong increase in, in patent filings, especially under the PCT system from Chinese companies. And I think ZTE Technologies and Huawei Technologies, uh, the two dominant uh, PCT filers uh, stand out here. You know, how those international patent filings have translated into national phase entries and then how those national phase entries have fared in national patent offices. But I think it is too early to, to make any assessment in that regard. Um, yeah, the the Russians. Uh, what um, what sort of um, areas were they um, filing patents in? Uh, or applications, rather. Well, the short answer is we don't know, without without examining those all of their applications. You know, which is possible. You know, you can do that, but we don't have that information available now. But what we could do is, if you're particularly interested, uh, I mean, this is all public information. I think it wouldn't be difficult for us to provide you the breakdown by field of technology. As you see in Annex uh, 4, we have the breakdown by field of technology for all applications. It wouldn't be difficult for us uh, for you to provide you the breakdown specifically for uh, applications from the Russian Federation. Um, uh, have you just got um, a any general um, ballpark uh, estimation of, um, of idea of what the, what the areas that were? No? no? Okay. Tamir, Kuwait News Agency. Uh, yes, uh, uh, on page three there is a decline in the growth um, in, for the United Kingdom, Netherlands, um, Finland, Australia, Spain, and other Western universities also. Do you think that there is a relation between, a relation between this decline and the financial crisis in supporting or financing the development and uh, research? Um, I'd say, first of all, that there were very mixed results from Europe. Some European countries, have used, as you have pointed out, have risen, and others um, fell down. For example, Switzerland was up 7.3%, and France was up 5.8%, and Germany up 5.7%. But as you have said, Netherlands minus 14%, uh, Finland minus 2.7%, and Spain minus 2.7%. Also, you point out, Australia has uh, declined as well. Um, my own view, and then I'll ask Carsten to correct it or to add to it, is that this is a direct reflection of the e economic circumstances, with the exception of Australia, uh, where there has not been an economic recession. Uh, in the case of Australia, I, I'm not sure what the explanation is, but my uh, guess is that it's related to the principal sources of, of national income being in the uh, manufacture in the mining sector uh, and less in the um, research and development area, although their percentage uh, of uh, GNP devoted to R and D has been rising. So I'm not sure what the explanation is, but for Europe, I would say th these figures are related to. Uh, different strategies adopted during the economic crisis to innovation and research and development, but also, secondly, and perhaps more importantly, uh, different capacities to be able to address research and development during the economic crisis. 
Well, if I maybe could add one or two thoughts here. I think, you know, in any given country, patent filing trends are influenced by a number of factors. And we know for a fact, I think there is enough evidence, accumulated evidence, that suggests that the business cycle does play an important role. And certainly, if the economy is uh, on a downward trend, uh, you know, that does affect uh, um, companies' uh, patent uh, filing um, behavior. On the other hand, we also know that um, there are other factors that are relevant. You know, certain, um, let's say, industry trends, uh, uh, the industrial structure of um, um, uh, a country's uh, um, research and development activities matters in that regard. So it's very difficult for us, you know, on the basis of these headline numbers to say, you know, this is directly rela related uh, to the economic crisis. On the other hand, I think it is no coincidence, you know, that uh, we have a rather mixed performance from European countries, and you know, this, as you know, uh, has been the region, um, you know, most uh, affected uh, by at least the latest uh, wave of, of of the economic crisis that we have observed.